The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Coming up, after experiencing three consecutive miscarriages, Ryan and Julia continued to pray for multiple children. Every time Julia would come in and say, we, we lost this one, like, my heart would just sink. I had to decide either God is who he says he is or he isn't, and there's really no wiggle room. Hear how this reality show couple went from grief to joy as they dared to pray big and experienced miracle triplets next. Today, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Sheila Walsh. And you know, that show on TLC rattled. I'm glad you're watching Life Today right now. But there is a, a very popular show. My wife loves it. Do you ever watch the show? Uh, of course I do. I love, love the that? show, yes. See, it was a bit new to me. It's, it's not exactly my genre. There were... <laughs> anyway, but we have, we have people from Rattled right here on the Some set. of the very stars. We, we do. Would you welcome Ryan and Julia Sadler? <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So, we're not just going to talk about the, the show, although I'm sure a lot of people will, will listen to that all day long. But you have a book called Pray Big Things, which ties in, I think, with the show. But give us a little bit of background so that we'll understand the context of this Pray Big Things, because it's not just three words. It's a, it's a big deal in your lives. Yes, for sure. So the idea for Pray Big Things came three years ago. We didn't have anything really terrible going on, no incurable diagnosis, a really even big problem. And we've both been Christians for quite a long time, but we just wanted more out of our life, out of our relationship with God. And we both just felt this stir in our spirit of the Holy Spirit saying, what if, what if you really give all you have. What if those promises in scripture really are for you? And so we both just really felt that that was something God told us. And we made a list of 20 things. We sat down and we just said, you know what? We're not going to be embarrassed to ask God for anything. And so no one's watching. It's just us. I mean, of course, God's watching. Um, but we're like, let's just come down and agree on a list of 20 things we're going to pray until they happen or until God clearly says no. And so on that list were multiples because we're going to ask for anything. I didn't multiple. Think, yeah, multiple children. Oh, children. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Could have been multiple yeah, dogs. Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. We, um, I I never, I just assumed that I probably couldn't do childbirth more than once. So I thought I've, I've always wanted multiples. I used to dress up my sister like we're twins. I've just, I've always been drawn to that. She had no so, idea what she was getting No into, idea, no uh, idea. No. Um, and we, we had been writing curriculum for our student ministry for years. We really wanted to get that published. So we had on their uh, book deals, just anything. We had um, people we wanted to see get saved, um, people in our family struggling with different addictions. And we just super specifically, that was the rule. It's uh, specific and persistent. And so, um, you know, whenever I, I believe when you start praying differently, God takes notice and so does Satan. And so whenever we um, started praying multiple times a day, persistently, boldly becoming coming before the throne, um, really interesting things started happening. We got pregnant immediately. And I remember, I remember thinking, that was easy. Yeah, there you <laughs> I, was like, well, okay. you receive, right? I was like, next. Um, and we we lost that we lost that child and um, it was it coincided that miscarriage coincided with um, an event I have for teenage girls where I had a hundred girls in my backyard that I was teaching on how God has a purpose for their life for that season mm. that is not contingent on anything in the future. There's a that season has a spiritual purpose and so obviously that was so surreal losing our first child while having a hundred girls in my backyard to minister to one of them here today, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, they, then, you know, it was like, oh, that's sad. But a lot of people are like, we've had miscarriages too. We're like, okay. Um, and then we get pregnant again, and then we lose that child. And when that happened, Ryan and I, it was just impossible not to feel like something was going on, um, especially because we were committed to praying such big prayers. And so we just decided that, you know, even though this surprises us, it doesn't surprise God. And just taking very 
very practically what scripture says about it's an honor to suffer. And so we, um, even though we're struggling with this personally, it was on the verge of the biggest evangelism campaign initiative our student ministry had ever seen. We had 12 year olds that were witnessing to Muslims on the streets of downtown Dallas. And we saw 130 people specifically shared and told the gospel to people under 18. And so it was incredible. It was just this neat evangelistic thing that took off in our student ministry. And so even though we were struggling so much personally, it was when of the best um, seasons in ministry. Mm. And so um, then I'll, you know, just to close with this, then we get pregnant again and lose that baby. And um, on a weekend, I'm speaking in two different states, one at a women's conference on anxiety and depression and the other on why God allows suffering. Really? <laughs> and so, yes. Really? And so it was just, I mean, I really felt like mm-hmm. it was two spiritual forces just waging war for our faith and our family. What are, what's going through your head at this point? This, I mean, this whole time was obviously very taxing on us. I mean, we, we had heard that, it, you know, most people would, you know, do suffer, um, one miscarriage, a lot of women, they first start trying, but you know, when they s- just kept happening, it was, it started getting very, it started testing us quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, every time Julie would come in and say, we, we lost this one, like my heart would just sink, you know? Mm-hmm. And for me, it was, you know, as a husband, I can't really do a whole lot, you know, I can't fix it, can't, you know, but just be there for her and, and come alongside of her. And, and you know, it was amazing because I had some men come alongside me as well and kind of uh, help me through that. But. Uh, it was hard, and, and I knew that the best thing I could do for, for our marriage um, was to make sure that we that I was stay with her, prayed with her, supported her, you know, in everything that she was doing. What um, what questions were you asking God? Surely you had to be asking something. Well, I you know I knew about three things in my life. I knew I knew I was supposed to, you know supposed to be a Christian called to ministry, and uh, I knew I was supposed to be married, and specifically to Julia. Oh, that's good. Good choice. <laughs> good choice. <laughs> good, choice. <laughs> like, <laughs> good save. And I knew I was supposed to be a father. Mm. And I just somehow, you know, I just felt like God had told me that, you know, when I was younger. And, and, uh, and I just was wondering, why is this happening? Mm. You know, and, uh, you know, later on, I don't give too much away just yet, but um, it was all in God's timing. Yeah. I mean, God's timing is perfect. Oh, no, give it away. Tell us what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Julia take this because, I mean, it was... Oh, I want, let me ask you yeah. one question yeah. before you. Um, how did that kind of loss mm-hmm. impact your mm-hmm. prayer life? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, yes. you've been a Christian, you've been yes. in the church, your dad's yes. a very well-known, very well-loved yes. pastor, um, and that's been your life, but mm-hmm. you go through this tremendous loss and suffering. Mm-hmm. How did that change the way you prayed? Yes. So it's like what you said. I mean, I became a Christian when I was four. And I, I mean, I really, I mean, I really have followed God most of my life. Um, with a little breaks here and there, but that's not what this show's about. <laughs> anyway, and, um, but it was, I, I had to decide either God is who he says he is or he isn't. Mm-hmm. And there's really no wiggle room. And so I think it's such a benefit. And, you know, we work with students. That's what our life is in student ministry is such a benefit to know the word of God. Mm -hmm. And then what really having a time where the rubber meets the road, I was like, okay, this is why you learn this first in Bible drill. (laughs) And starting to see it as an opportunity. I love, there's a quote my dad says often that trials are God's vote of confidence in you. And I think it was F.B. Meyer, I think, but just that, okay, like really picturing that God's up there, like you can do this. I've got you. And just the opportunity to live that out. You have an interesting phrase in your book. You said um, that for some time you were living on borrowed prayers. Mm-hmm. What, what did you mean by that? Yeah, so I always thought prayer was really boring. Um, <laughs> I was like, I mean, really, like sometimes they can get so long. And like, as you know, I'm on the front row, so I'm always like kind of peeking around, like, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, I've sat through a lot of prayers in my life as I a hear pastor. You. I, hear you. I get it. And I, I, you know, I've grown up with that heritage of this person's prayed for you. And I was like, that's great, you know. Um, but really, when you're a child, I think you can really take that for granted. And when you're someone that has grown up in the church and you're just like, well, yeah, like this is great. Thanks for praying for me. Um, but whenever you really have a time where you need to see God move, you need to see that. You need to feel that. And so 
I talk about borrowed prayers because I think if you've grown up surrounded by prayer, it can kind of be like a oh, big deal. But a lot of us are benefiting from the prayer work. I say the knee work of other people. Yeah. Other people have spent generations praying for who would come after them. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. When you um, when you went through this tremendous loss, and then you start to write pray big prayers. Mm -hmm. um, how has that impacted your work with young people? Yes. Because you're very committed to student ministry. Yes. But they've seen you walk through tremendous suffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, were, we weren't broadcasting it right away, the miscarriages. And, you know, with the third miscarriage, it was like, all right, we're facing something here for sure. And so we started praying even more. We'd be watching Netflix. I'm like, we got to pray right That's now. Right. And I mean, that it just became this whole, it was our life praying. And so we prayed for three children, for multiples, but then, which was already on the list. And then we added Ephesians 3.20, mm -hmm. for God to do more than anything we can hope or imagine. And boy, did he. Yes. <laughs> and so, you know, we find out from the fertility doctor, people always want to know that bit, did take medication to help not miscarry. That does not usually equal triplets. So we say God used medication to fulfill our request. Right. But we got the news that we were having triplets. Oh, yes. And oh where I read accounts of other people being stunned, we were like, what? Like, I mean, we just idea. felt like we had won the gold medal. I mean, we, and I just yelled, I knew it. I mean, I just knew it because it didn't make sense to experience so much suffering and to have so many people accept Christ as their savior. Like, what is going on here? And so in that, it just was like, one for the home team, you yeah. know? But then <laughs> at 22 weeks, I'm put on bed rest wow. and go into labor. And the neonatologist comes in and says, they're going to be born blind, deaf, or with mm. brain bleeds or not at all. Oh, wow. But you didn't wow. accept that, did no, you? Didn't. That's the part you booked yeah. that was like, yeah, girl. Yeah, I didn't. No, as soon as he came in, it was like God just screamed in my spirit, no. Mm -hmm. And then I nicely told the doctor, please leave. And Ryan went in the hall <laughs> with him. And, um, you know, just to kind of... Well, yeah, yeah, what happened yeah, in the hallway? Yeah, what yeah. happened out there? Well, he started, he started to kind of get into what would happen if the babies were born right then. That day we got checked in right. to the hospital, and Julia could only hear a couple of sentences that he was saying um, about what would happen to them. They'd be blind or brain bleeds or heart problems and this and that and all this stuff. And Julia said, get out. No, I did not say that. I said, Pretty much. Okay. I, 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 I said, please, I said, please, please. You know, no, yeah, I don't think it's, I mean, but it was, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily the wrong response, yeah. quite honestly, because right. that, just, that can put fear in a woman, which is not healthy yes. for, for right. her body. I mean, right. You're so helpless laying there on hospital bed, but I, I went out there with him and I listened to the rest of what, you know, we might expect. Yeah. And it was, um, I sat there and just listened and processed it. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we, we both just knew when he was telling us these things, like, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I know this isn't the end of, this story, our baby's story, you know, we, we had a mm -hmm. whole church behind us. We had mm -hmm. so many people praying. I yeah. mean, we just knew it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, through all, all of that time, mm -hmm. um, we learned that, you know, you can have a thriving relationship with God in the midst of suffering. Yeah. I mean, you really can. Mm -hmm. We had a choice. We could either run uh, to God or we could run away. And we mm -hmm. just decided that, you know, that's not something we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to stay close to God. At, at that way. moment, I mean, that for both of you, you know, mm -hmm. you in the hospital room, you mm -hmm. outside with the doctor, mm -hmm. that fear mm -hmm. had to be real because you had yeah. already lost three. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it sounds nice when you say it now after yeah. the fact. Right. But right. how terrifying. big of a battle was terrifying. it? You had to just step up and say, it was. So I knew I needed to read the Bible. Like, and I, I mean, I, I mean, I knew that. Yeah, and yeah. I thought I was going to be going home the next day. Ended up being 49 days of laying in a bed, staring out the same window. Oh, seeing, oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Like, I'm mean, just seeing the seasons change yeah. and begging God to let us all live. So it was really terrifying. And I was like, I know I'm supposed to read the Bible, but like, I can't read Revelation or anything right now. And I felt like God said, it's okay, just read Psalm. Mm -hmm. And Psalm just became my lifeline. And it was so specific, like for the day. And I just told God, this surprises us. I know it doesn't surprise you. Show us why we're here. And we, through that, um, a lot of people heard our story. We got to witness to many of the nurses and medical staff mm -hmm. and 
that's how TLC heard about our story and everything. But yeah, it's it's different looking back because you're like, oh, well, didn't you know what was going to happen? But no. that's no, not the outcome for a lot of people. So when were, when were these little wee ones born? <laughs> yes. So the big prayer was for 34 weeks. 34 weeks was like you know, the best chance of survival and everything like that. And so that was the prayer request that went out. We had people all over the world, different countries praying. It was just incredible. And um, so it was like week 34, week 34. Um, and I seriously, I mean, I know so many of us, it's not the same experience, but it's the same emotions of just situations you never would have chosen, but that when you look back, you're like, oh my gosh, like that grew my faith so much. Mm -hmm. And so um, he just definitely showered us with protection. Mm -hmm. But then one day I just cracked and was like, I have to get out of this hospital. <laughs> like I haven't <laughs> been outside in like, you know, months. And um, I told God, I was, I was crying in the shower and I said, Holy Spirit, something's happening. I need you to pray on my behalf. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, like, I didn't know what that meant. And I fell asleep woke up the next day, just total peace. And we went in, I got out of my hospital room twice a week, one for date nights with Ryan at the hospital. In the wheelchair. Very romantic in the wheelchair. And then the other <laughs> was this one, the sonogram. And um, the, I don't, I don't want to say it wrong, sonographer, I'm not sure, <laughs> um, got real quiet and we we're like, oh no. And he goes, okay, your little girl has stopped growing. And we were just like, and he said, they're going to be born today. And we just I started praising God immediately. How far was, along were you at that point? Uh, yes, week 30, day four. So even oh. in that, <laughs> uh, yes, even in that, God was like, my ways are higher than your ways. Wow. So um, there's like, you don't know what to expect. They probably won't cry. They probably won't be anything um, where you can hear them. There was a medical staff of 24 people in the room um, and they all came out crying and screaming and surviving 63 days in the NICU and we're all home the night before our nine year anniversary. Oh, so praise God, that was amazing. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Wow. So when you guys pray big, big things, they, yes. you got a really big thing. Yes. But I do have one serious question, and that's a, that's a beautiful story, and I know it's an ongoing thing. And how, so it's been about two years now, so. Oh, has it? Is that right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, yes. Okay. 20, yeah. 20 months. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so it's, it, it's good. Yes. It's good. They're all healthy. They're yes, all doing great. Yes, they are. What about people who Pray big things. Yeah. Yes. And the, the baby dies or the, right. the loved one doesn't get well right. or the job collapses or on and on and on mm -hmm. and on. That's right. What yes. do you tell them? Yes. So that was, um, you know, we very, I very strongly felt like that was supposed to be the title of the book because of wanting to encourage people in answer to what Sheila had said. Like so many, we find so many teenagers that fall away from the faith because like my yeah. prayer, big prayers didn't get answered. Yeah. What do you do with that? And so not to be misleading, the book is not do these things and what you want to happen happens. It's to help very much process unanswered prayers and questions and anxiety and loss. And the big prayers what we talk about is not always the result. Like it's not, I want this to happen. Mm -hmm. It's show me why this is happening and what your mm -hmm. purpose is for me in this season. And, you know, I just think life's too short to spend brokenhearted. And so asking God to help you, um, let go of dreams that aren't from him, that aren't going to happen, but to help you hold on with all, all strength and all passion to the ones that are from him. You know, I sometimes find in my own life when I've been praying passionately for something that might be way far down the line or might not come to realize, what I've actually gained in the in that moment is more of the presence of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. More of the love of yes. God, understanding more of who God is. Mm -hmm. And I would just say that to any of you who are watching at home and think, well, I'm so, so happy for them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I have a dream that hasn't come true. Right. I just want you to know God does not love you any less. Mm -hmm. right. There's no, it's not like you're not praying properly. Mm -hmm. as, as Julia said, God's ways are higher than our ways. Mm -hmm. and And, but he is with you in the process. Remember mm -hmm. Psalm 34, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and yeah. saves those who crushed in spirit. You know, Sheila, I think one of the ways that we can I eventually have our prayers answered is, as my father likes to say, be an answer to someone else's prayer. Mm -hmm. I want to show you an opportunity where you can be an answer to someone's prayer, and it's not near as difficult as having triplets. It's very <laughs> simple, but it's very effective. Would you watch this with us? Hello, mommy. Hello. It's okay. 
What, is he saying something? He says it's painting. It's pain? Yeah, it's pain. It's painting. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> I'm in a village in Angola and came upon this child. This little boy's a goose dog, and this breaks my heart. His little feet are in some of the worst shape I've ever seen. And there were many in this village with horrible conditions on their feet. But this little guy, he's, he's just scratching. They itch so bad. They're completely infected. He said there's insects that have gotten into his feet. I, I'll be surprised if he doesn't lose his toe. And then the disease comes in through their feet and just goes throughout their body. It can actually kill them all from going barefoot in conditions that we're in right here. I know Shoes and Smiles is a campaign that we get really excited about and it's fun, but this is why it's fun, because it saves lives. You would think just a pair of shoes is not life-saving, but in areas like this, in conditions like this, it is. And we can change it for Augusto. We can help him. We, we're going to clean these up and, and get him a pair of shoes and help him. Please do what you can. Help bring shoes to little children like Augusto all over the world. You can be a part of something big and something even fun. But this is the reason we do it. Please. Do you know what it takes to give that young boy shoes, a pair of shoes like this? $3.60. That is so little to make such a huge, huge difference. Sheila, this is the last week that we are doing the, the Christmas Shoes and Smiles. I know we're early as far as the year goes, but it's so important that people understand that this is, is not just simply a gift, it's a lifesaver. Yeah. I was in Angola with Janice that you saw there in that um, film piece, and when you walk with some of these moms and their children down to where they get water, and these children have no shoes on, and they have cuts in their feet, and then they put their feet into dirty water, and often it's hookworm, you know, which can actually go to a child's brain and take away their life. And all they're asking for is for a pair of shoes for their child. Now, you know, we're a little early, as Randy said, for Christmas, but we have to know, we're, it's been our goal to get 150,000 children shoes for Christmas. Mm -hmm. This is our last week. Mm -hmm. Um, we can all do something um, very reasonable if you can for $36 you can give 10 children a pair of shoes you can't buy shoes for that price over here for $180 you can put um, shoes on the feet of 50 children and it's it's to me it's one of those things that you know when Christmas comes around it gets kind of crazy the mall gets busy everything gets kind of nuts wouldn't it be a phenomenal thing to do as a family to say you know what this year we're not going to do that you know sure we're going to have fun together but we're going to make Christmas about giving mm -hmm. because Christmas is about giving mm -hmm. if God hadn't given us Christ where would any of us be you, you mentioned the mall do you still go to the mall no I don't actually. I don't either no. you know I go online I click a little bit and boom, the gift arrives. That's what you can do. You can send that gift halfway around the world. Just go online, lifetoday.org, make the best gift you can, and this wonderful gift will arrive this Christmas for children who will appreciate it so, so much. We call it Christmas Shoes and Smiles because there is another part of this. We provide shoes, but we also provide smiles, literally giving children the ability to smile as we go in and we work with these surgeons who have so graciously given over their time to fix a, a cleft lip, a cleft palate, which in a lot of third world countries is, is not, um, it's not a simple thing. It, it's a very complex thing and, and it can really put a child at a disadvantage from a health standpoint, uh, from all, all sorts of standpoints. So we can fix that. Now that's a $500 item, uh, a big ticket item to me. But I think there are quite a few of you out there that, that have the means that would say, you know what, I want to put that smile on a child's face. $500 will do that for one, $1,000 for two. Whatever you can do, I think it, it is that sense of giving, that sense of, you know what, we are the expression of the, the one we celebrate at Christmas, of Christ. Will you go online or pick up the phone and give the best gift you can. Give 
some shoes, and give some smiles. Poverty is a killer, and because of it, children needlessly suffer, not only from a lack of food and clean water, but also from a lack of things we often take for granted, like a simple pair of shoes. Far too many children living in extreme poverty have never owned a new pair of shoes. And while that may seem minor in light of all their needs, walking with bare feet puts them at risk of life-threatening infections and disease that could lead to crippling consequences and even death. By responding today, you can help immediately secure and begin shipping Christmas shoes to 150,000 children around the world, just in time for the holidays. Your gift of $36 will help provide 10 pairs of shoes, a gift of $72 will provide 20 pair, and a gift of $180 will help provide 50 pairs of Christmas shoes for children in need. As a thank you for your gift of support, be sure to request this beautifully crafted green crystal shoe ornament, a treasure to display at each Christmas. With your gift of $100 or more, you may also request this keepsake boxed set of life's Christmas shoe ornaments. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,000 or more to help provide over 275 pairs of shoes or two children with corrective cleft palate surgeries. And you may request the beautiful Safe in the Shepherd's Arms bronze sculpture. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. We sure appreciate all that you are doing. Please give the best gift you can so we can get some, some shoes and some smiles. And if you would like some more information on our guests, you guys have a website. What's that website? Yes, juliajsapler.com. And we can find out about the book, about the show yes. rattled, and the ministry, all those wonderful things. Yes. We sure appreciate you guys being here. Sheila? Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for praying. <laughs> Big things. It's a great book. It's an amazing story and three darling children. <laughs> Please, you. will you thank our guests? <laughs> and thank you, Sheila. We're here. We're glad you're here. We hope to see you again. See you next time. Tomorrow on Life Today, best-selling author Stormy Omardian shares her story and the power of a praying woman. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.